I'm Troy Hitt. And I'm Nicole Hitt. We're from Humble, Texas, and we were Team Red on Season 3 of Relative Race. On Season 3, we raced from Washington to Southern California, discovering relatives we never knew we had. Are you a relative? Yes, we are. <laughs> we had no phones or technology, and we competed against three different teams in challenges trying to win $50,000. This was the hardest 10 days of our lives. I don't think we anticipated the days to be as long as they were. Being part of a reality show and, and you know, being mic'd up, being followed the whole time, and it, it, the days were just really long and you didn't know what to expect. You got four miles. I really thought we were gonna win. It's up here, it's up here, come on. I just kind of always go into it like, have you met us, <laughs> we're gonna win. But it was hard. Are you kidding me? It's probably been 16 years since I've read a paper map. You know, and so as you're going on, you're like, okay, I see that. Wait, this road's not on the map. <laughs> Fantastic. It's hard to navigate on the fly. Go, 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 go. Driving with no electronics is so hard. <laughs> Sir! I was very thankful <laughs> for my smartphone when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> and Google Maps. <laughs> After being on the show, uh, Troy, more so than me, uh, definitely has had celebrity spottings. Um, mm. We saw uh, people at the airport. Um, we've been flying out, and um, it's it's awesome to see how many families watch the show because it's normally the kids, the parents make the kids come up and <laughs> ask him. Yeah. So he's gotten recognized at the airport. It's, it's literally like, Troy? Team Red? I'm like, yeah, hi, what's up? What a lot of people don't know is during the filming of the show, our house was actually taking on water. Um, all of Houston was taking on water. The entire city flooded. Hurricane Harvey has made landfall along the Barrier Islands near Corpus Christi. As soon as we were done filming, we went home to massive cleanup. Our house got uh, roughly two feet of water in it. When we got our phones back after the show, after we got our technology back and I opened my phone up, the first image that was sent to me was our house underwater. Most people were trying to evacuate and couldn't and we had just been lucky enough to do it before it hit. After going through everything with Harvey and the cleanup, it was one of those times where we're kind of like, do we want to be stuck here or do we want to go see all these places we've never seen? During Relative Race, we had that beautiful drive down the West Coast and we discovered there's a lot of the country that we haven't seen. So Relative Race inspired us to explore the country and ultimately retrace where we went on the show. Where did they take you? We no longer own a home. We travel full time around the world in an RV. We sold our business, we sold our CrossFit gym. And if it floods, we just drive away. <laughs> <laughs> Water's coming up. Oh, there's a storm. Let's go this way. <laughs> I, I work remotely with Nicole. We both work th for the same software company remotely so we can do our job anywhere um, in the world for that matter. You know, sometimes you realize what you can actually do without. It's also awesome to be able to go places and move constantly if you want to and never have to pack a suitcase because you've packed your house. We've already made some lifelong friends just a year on the road already. I, I love that aspect of it. I love it that you really can just make more friends. Then we get to tell them our story. We, we share our story uh, about relative race. You know, how did this start, right? And we're like, well, since you asked, <laughs> we were on this show, and now we want to travel the country forever. Right now, we're in sweet Idaho. So now we've been here six months, and I absolutely love it. I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a place to ride horses. <laughs> Since I'm such a horse fan, uh, I now also work at a ranch um, in my spare time and help do all the scheduling and everything for them. And then we are continuing our adventures heading up to Utah and uh, then California to see the cousins for the holidays. But the biggest thing that's changed is our family's a lot bigger now. So uh, we have a lot of demand on our time for, we've got, um, we've got about five first cousins that want to spend a lot of time with us now. The main reason I wanted to be on the show is I was adopted, and so I didn't know my dad or my dad's family. 
I was confident that, you know, my dad was still out there and that I would get to meet him and, you know, ask him some questions. That's, that's my dad. That's my dad. Does that mean he's deceased? That means he's deceased. Finding that my father passed away was a really, really tough one to deal with, but also a bit of relief to gives you that closure because it just know when people ask, you know, what about your dad? I know who he was now. Um, my Uncle Dave was a big part of this. Okay, who's So wrong? you're Bob Harmon's son, Troy? That's me. Yes. I'm your father's brother, Dave. No Your way. uncle. From the introduction when he said, <sighs> that he was my, my dad's brother. I'm so glad to finally meet you. This is as close as I'm gonna get right now. So I hugged him and I didn't wanna let him go. He has laid out this memoriam, that's the best way to describe it, for my dad. Personal effects, photo albums. I immediately, before I even sat down, I'm like, that's my dad. Here's his wallet. What? Yeah. That's crazy. I still have that wallet. Everything that's in it is content. You know, it's a piece of my dad. We've contacted each other a couple times since the show. You could tell he's a private person, but for him to open up his house for that moment in time was huge. He has sent me, since the show, have sent me all my dad's belongings, and that's a big piece of um, that I carry with me now. I'm your aunt. You're my aunt? <laughs> <laughs> Since relative race, my Aunt Diana, which we call her Auntie D now, is a big part of our life. This is your first cousin, my daughter Gina. Hi, Hi. pleasure nice to meet you. Oh, come on, Gina. Just about any family gathering that she's involved in, uh, we can expect a conference call. I look forward to it. I don't think a lot of people are blessed enough to say, I look forward to going and spending time with my family. You would think it was Christmas morning every day because she just can't get enough. There's just, there's so much like instant acceptance and love and, you know, come in, we have to update you, we have to include you. And, and now, like, especially as far as the cousins go, we're so involved that it's like, we feel so like family because there's not enough time and they actually complain and gripe to us about it. Yeah, like, so, like yeah. siblings. It's like the first <laughs> night when we, they didn't want us to leave. We um, got her a little gift um, uh, for this Christmas. And it has all the pictures that are around the, the show, really. Um, but it starts, starts with Relative Race right here. That's our car. And then all of our gatherings with all the cousins from the day we first met on the show, there's Auntie D there, which is a really special one. That's why it's the biggest one. And then this was the very first shot with all the cousins in that picture right there. It's pretty special. That was actually during the taping of the show. That's when we all first met and got together. So pretty excited. I think she's going to love it. <laughs> You're Troy. I am Troy. Hi. I've heard a lot about you. All right. <laughs> Trish and, and Terry were the first cousins that we met. They were the closest cousins that we met in the show. Later after the show, we found out that Terry was a big part of why we were even on the show, why it was even possible for us. It was her DNA sample that kind of tied everything together that found our Auntie D and tied everything together. Unfortunately, she got she got very sick, and um, she passed away. The silver lining to all of it was that not only did we get to meet her and have a chance to spend time with her, but I feel like because of the show, she was brought back in um, with people that she hadn't really had a lot of contact with for years, and they were able to all be with her up until the end. So that was that was the good thing that did come out of that. I'm glad we got to spend the time we did with her. And it was, it was great. And it was only because of relative race that was possible. You know, personally, the show has changed me in the aspect is I feel like my identity is complete. It's just, it's there now. It is in me now. Before it was a mystery, but it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's just in me now. I, I find myself on a weekly or even daily basis. I have family in California. Really awesome. Did you do that from an ancestry test? No, I actually went on a show that <laughs> told me that, you know? So I think it's just, it's in me, that's the best way to describe it. It's literally part of my DNA now. <laughs>